and we're back for another video. I have a blacked out 2024 X3 rental car. Um, my 3 Series is in the shop again. This is how I keep getting these newer BMWs. Um, the first two times was warranty work for an electrical issue I was having. The second time they figured it out. Third time when I had the Mazda CX-5 was because of the pothole issue. They gave me the car back for like a week and then that other side started clunking. They took it in. It was a tie rod. $1,200 between rental car and replacing the tie rod. Um, but my warranty covered it. If you get the BMW Ultimate Care, if you get the option to buy it when you buy a CPO car, buy it because the CPO warranty will not cover tie rods and stuff. But the BMW Ultimate Care will cover all of that. Um, but 2024 X3, I actually really like this car, this SUV. It has the M Sport package. I was looking for one of these. I actually prefer these. Um, I could have gotten one of these and then got rid of my Grand Cherokee so I can have my SUV. But they had the, like the 2021 models were kind of like the pre-LCI refresh. You can tell because it had the halo lights. These have the little like L-shaped ones. But what that means is that it's the same SUV, same engine, everything. But the interior was like a little bit older. So like it had like knobs and stuff like that for the climate control. It had a smaller screen. It had the digital gauges, which is nice, but it had some older like infotainment i guess that's how i'd call it but do a walk around she so has she's all blacked out um glass roof um these taillights are beautiful they're smoked out look at that that rerun just looks like scary uh two exhausts like tippy things they're um like smoked out too which is nice i like how a bmw makes everything all the fit and finish is always nice so you have the tow package here but as you can see it's kind of integrated perfectly it's not like a little stupid cover open up the trunk so if you have one of these cars what you can actually do is code it because from the remote you can open the trunk but you can't close it and from the button you can open it but you can't close it with by coding the car you can actually open and close it but decent sized trunk space um a little storage here a little bit more storage there and then i don't know what's back here but battery batteries back here batteries right here um it's a decent storage space you have 20 40 20 or 40 20 40 split seats and then a cargo cover. So it's nice. I can climb under the trunk without actually bumping my head on it, which is nice. Back seat area, nice place to be. So we climb inside. Remember this car is based off of the three series. Um, so it's equivalent to like a Nissan Rogue, not in terms of luxury, but in terms of size. You're gonna be looking at like a Nissan Rogue, um, a Honda CRV. This is still like normal car people. Um, if you're higher end, you're looking at like a GLC 300 or something. But plenty of leg room, as you can see. I'm six feet tall, 190 pounds. Um, about four inches of leg space or knee space, which is pretty nice. And then head space, even with this glass roof, that's optional. I have about two inches of space right here, which is nice. I got six feet tall. Um, I can recline. The car does, the seat does recline, as you can see, about two inches by pulling the switch here. So you see that? So you get a little bit of a recline, which makes the car a little bit more comfortable. Seats are soft. It's just a nice place to be back here. Um, cup holders, center pass through, and then headrests that fold flat. So you can fold them up like that, like my car, and then fold them out of the way, which I, which I like. Um, Climate control back here, your own zone. You can even control where it goes. Oh, wait. Nice. Oh, it turns on when the car's off. Oh, oh, the car's in accessory mode. Oh, it turned all of them on. Okay, nice. Okay, anyway. Um, full glass roof. You have, these are an optional sunshade. I think they're like $200. You have two LED buttons right here, which is nice. You can turn both of them on. You can turn one of them on. I think this one kind of faces you. X for X3 right there. There's a lot of like this aluminum looking finish that's really nice. And you have the ambient lighting strip down here and down here. Metal buttons, metal door switches, a cup holder pocket, and a deep, my whole hand's in there, deep door pocket. There's a lot of storage back here. It's a nice place to be. And you got coat hangers up there. So this car is $60,000. So I'm trying to show you guys what you guys can get for $60,000. You're running on Pirelli P7 Centuros. They're the same tire I was running on my BMW before. 
um, the run flats, 245, 50, 19. They actually, these ride pretty good. I think it's just because they're bigger, and, but they still have a decent wall. They're a 50 series wall on a 245 tire, so the wall's a lot bigger. Oh, let's turn off the climate control. So this is the cockpit of it. Again, you have the M Sport. You have the Sport pedals back there. Doors, these are actually, I don't know if you can see that. This is actually soft. So in my three series, this is hard, right? This is the same material as this. It goes all the way down, or even this, right? This is very plush, so I can't complain. This and the center console are more plush than my three series. This is even, it's not like hard, but it's not soft. It has a little bit of give, which is nice. And you can put a, tuck your arm in there when I'm driving, which is kind of nice. Um, but the doors feel solid. Everything about this car just feels so solid. Um, big, huge door bins that actually go all the way back. Big, huge cup holder right there. Easy in and easy out. It's super easy to climb into. Same seats as the 3 Series that I have. Um, but my friends and I all swear that like this section is a little bit more plush than my car. Like It feels like it has a little bit more give. But we'll get in. Start the car. We'll get some climate control going because it's um, a little warm in here. Oh no, oh no, hold on guys. Synchronize. Is that its lowest setting? Okay, so here's the cockpit of the car. You have your you know, full, out, full roof. Why are you blowing so strong? Turn the auto off. There we go. So, this is the cockpit. You have the M Sport wheel, which I love. Oh my god, this wheel is great. It's the thick bolstering. Like, I didn't realize it was that big of an issue when I bought my BMW, but it's nice. Here you have the adaptive cruise control with, like, the full system. So, you have these LED lights here that'll turn, like, red, yellow, and green, which is nice. And that'll, you know, follow the car in front of you. So, you have two versions of it. That's really nice. You'll know instantly if a car comes with it because it'll have these buttons, but also right here, it'll have this, like, Thing that jets out like a nipple um and that's the thing that watches you but memory seats again door switch buttons trunk button open and close right here it'll only well, it'll only close it it'll only open it it won't close it um but you can code it to do that so that's kind of nice this is all updated for the 2020 i think 2023 i think um, this used to be the old climate control knobs, and this was just normal, and they replaced it with the 3 Series style, like style, which is nice. They put a bigger screen here. I think this is a 12.3-inch screen, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's the same system my car has, the iDrive 8. It works. It's snappy. This one's missing a lot of apps that mine has because somebody just didn't install them. It's a rental car, 3,000 miles, but this is the same as any 3 Series you're going to get or all the new 5 Series, or 5 Series and uh, 3 Series. So it's a good system. Climate control is a good system. This is the digital screen cluster. It's nice. You can kind of go through your normal stuff. If you've been in a recent BMW, you'll see that it's normal. Um, it's good. I like it. Uh, different modes give you different things. Eco mode, sport mode. So if, I want to show you guys gas mileage. So I've had this car for a week. And uh, let's see, driving information, trip data. So I have a, I've had this car since 628 and this it is currently 76. July 6th. I've had it for about a week. I've averaged 26.4 miles a gallon and I've driven 883 miles. So it's for an SUV it's pretty good. For a, again, SUV that's running a 0 to 60 in, the, in like the 6s, like 6.3, 6 6.4, it's going to be faster than a, like a RAV4, it's going to be faster than a Honda CRV. Um Again, it's a, I keep seeing those cars because that's what most people understand as a small SUV. Um, it's equivalent to like a GLC um, from Mercedes. That's what you're going to be cross-shopping. Maybe an RDX, maybe, from Acura. But I keep saying Toyotas and Hondas because that's what most people understand as Toyotas and Hondas. It's easier than knowing what a GLC 300 is. Center console, I like it because it's big. A little storage section right here. Storage section right there. USB-C port right there. That's nice. And this is a lot softer than my car. You have the glove compartment right here. And then we actually have the window stickers. I'll show you guys. This car was priced out. So base model's 48.9. dollars 
This car has the $650 black paint, $1,700 for this traffic jam assist adaptive cruise control, $400 for the blackout package, which is really nice, $2,150 for the M Sport package, which gives you the 19 inch rims, standard suspension, roof rails, and high gloss black smoke gray aluminum rhombicles, which is this, um, M steering wheel and shadow line exterior trim. Um, and the shadow line package gives you even more shadow line exterior trim. Park Assistance Plus, it has the 360 cameras like my BMW does, so it's kind of nice. 360 cameras. Um, what's funny is if you notice that it shows how far the door, door will open when you open up the door all the way, which is kind of nice. I didn't realize it before, but it, that's showing you how far the door will open if you open it up all the way. And it has the backup assistant that backs you up into a parking spot, or and reverses you from the way you came. Um... But yeah, active distance control, rear view camera, and surround view 360. That's $700. That's a steal. Premium package, $3,550. My car has this. So it's heated steering wheel, comfort access, keyless entry, panoramic moonroof, lumbar support, heated front seats, live cockpit pro, which is the screen right here. This one also has a $300 remote start um, included. The trailer hitch is $600 with all the little doodads. Rear manual window shades, those little things I pulled up right there, $250. Sports seats, all that stuff is included. Wireless charging pad, which is right here. It's kind of nice. Uh, $500. That's not kind of nice. And then the uh, Harman Kardon sound system, $875. Trailer trailer hitch plugs, $40. Floor mats, $220. And destination, $995. So this car came out to $62,000. But basically, sixty, a little under sixty one dollars because of the destination. Um, BMW Ultimate Care, no or free maintenance for the first three years, 36,000 miles, which is kind of nice, including spark plugs, air filters, and all that stuff. This car is rated 21 City 28 Highway. I've consistently gotten 32, 33 on the highway. BMW does that. They, I don't know why they underrate their MPGs. Their cars are more fuel efficient than they say they are. I've consistently hit over 40 miles a gallon in my 3 Series, and it's rated 34 on the highway. And I'd never see 34 on the highway. I, th I see 37, 38, 40, 42 on the highway. Um, and then, you know, five stars for everything. Except for rollover, it got four stars. And 27% of it was made in America. So that's that's cool. Um, I love seeing the window stickers in these cars so I can go through. So somebody that has money is going to pay $61,000 for this car. And you might think, who's paying $61,000 for a, a small SUV? To the person making $100,000 and a person making $200,000, their value on $60,000 is different, right? It's less to them. You know, for us, a Snickers bar is a dollar. For them, a Snickers bar is 50 cents, for example. It's not the best way to put it, but that's how I see it. So I always say, oh, who, who would pay this much for a car like this? And it's somebody that's making a lot of money that they want a small SUV because if you go up to the X5, you're entering the 70,000, maybe $80,000 mark, just like a five series. So whoever's getting this car, they're pricing it the way they want because to them, the money has less strength because they have more of it, if that makes sense. Um, would I pay $61,000 for this car? Yeah, if I was making two three hundred $300,000 a year, 100%. Like, I wouldn't go dip down to a RAV4 then. I would just get one of these. If I have RAV4 money, would I get one? No, I would do what I did with my, with my 3 Series and I'd get one slightly, barely used because it loses like $15,000 in value within the first year. So you're better off getting these slightly used if you're like looking for one. You can probably find one of these used ones all day for like 38 to 42,000, which again is almost what $20,000 off. Found with 20,000 miles. That's a huge savings. Um, but I mean, you get a lot of car for the money. All wheel drive, it's a quick car. It handles great. This is one of the best driving dynamic wise SUVs. I've driven a RAV4, I've driven a Mazda CX-5, a Honda CRV. I think the CX-5 handled second best to this. This handled the best in my eyes. Um, it drives the best, it's so smooth, it's the power's linear, it's what you expect from BMW. And this is the first best I've found. Second best is the CX-5 and the third is like everybody else. I haven't driven a GLC, I'm sure a GLC will be up there, but it's supposed to be a more comfort oriented car. But this overall for what it, the bang for your buck when you buy it used um can't be beat you can go get a brand new cx5 for like a loaded one like a sport touring you're maybe in the mid to late 30s same with a crv same with a rav4 or if you find one of these that's one or two years old you can get one of these for around the same price used and you just get the warranty i got look it covered my tie rod my tie rod's 1200 dollars for that tie rod 1200 dollars 
And I went to BMW, I'm like, hey, fix it. They came back, they're like, your CPO warranty is not gonna cover this. I'm like, yeah, but I have BMW Ultimate Care warranty. Um, it's seven years from the day the car was built, right? Seven years, 84 months, 999 comma 999 unlimited miles, basically. So, they, and it covers everything. It doesn't cover like spark plugs. It doesn't cover, for whatever reason, coolant hoses, it doesn't cover. Um, it doesn't cover, I have the contract in the car with me. Um, tires, pads, rotors, you know, consumables, I guess, but it covers everything else. Again, tie rod is, in my eyes, a consumable, right? It's gonna go bad. The bushing is gonna go bad. They cover that. Control arms, sway bar links, struts, suspension, all covered under the BMW Ultimate Care Warranty. Um, I paid full transparency, $2,300. When you buy a warranty from the dealership, you can always negotiate. They wanted 3,000 for it. I got them down to 2,300 and it wouldn't budge any lower. At that point, I said, fine. Did I think I was gonna use it this soon? No. Did I use it this soon? Yes. And I still have, my car's covered until 12 of 2028. So yeah, I'm covered. I thought that it would kick in after the CPO warranty expired in a year from now, but that was wrong. It actually kicked in from the day the car was built technically. So I have, when they tell me the CPO warranty won't cover it, but BMW Ultimate War Care Warranty covered it. So, and it covered rental cars, BMW work. You just drop it off. You tell them, hey, I'm using this warranty so they know who to like file the claim with. And then it got approved. Um, but otherwise, it's a nice car. It is a very nice car. Um, I like it a lot. I think this is one of the best in its class. Um, again, I wasn't too fond of the... Got the front camera too. I wasn't too fond of the, the pre-LCI. Like, I want to say like the older body style, but it's the same car. Pre-LCI. It had a smaller screen up here. Um, the climate control was moved down here, and it was those big knobs. Um, and it just looked a little older. It had the, you know, the orange numbers, like my old 5 Series. So it just didn't feel as fresh as the 3 Series felt from the inside. For like a 2021. But I know they, I think they were LCI'd it in 2023. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, oh man, this car is very butter smooth. But we're going to go drop her off. I'm very sad right now. Um, I don't want to give it back. They know what they're doing. BMW gives you these very nice luxury cars, these fully specced out luxury cars because they give it to you and then you're so butt hurt because you don't want to return it. And But you have to return it. But you don't want to return it, but I have to return it. But I don't want to. And the downside is since BMWs take such a hit like in loss and since I drive so much, I've already put 20 something thousand miles in my car in six months. I'm killing the value faster than I would be killing the loan if I made the regular payments. Thankfully, I don't make the regular payments. I pay a little bit faster to cover the cost of the car. But um, we're gonna start driving now, so uh, I'll let you guys go. Hey guys, Click I have assisted driving on right now, and my foot's not on the brake, but it's slowing itself down. It's gonna come to a complete stop. It won't continue to go once it comes to complete stop. It'll just beep at you, so then to tell you like, hey, they moved out of the way to go. But again, it came to a complete stop without me using it. But I'm actually back to tell you guys, for the love of God, get the Harman Kardon system. Please, please, for the love of God. So I thought my system was okay, uh, my hi-fi system and mine. But, um, you know, listening to the Harman Kardon, I am underwhelmed right now, especially, and I don't know if it's true or not, but according to the forums in 2020 three or 24 the lci model they actually upgraded the harman kardon system i don't know if they like up the the watts or the power output or something but this thing sounds great for 875 dollars the harman kardon system is the way to go so like it turned on the engine it's gonna beep at me to go and now it's gonna go um it's accelerating by itself it's gonna try to get back up to 40 miles an hour by itself so um yeah please for the love of god so it's telling me to put my hands on the wheel right now but please, for the love of God, guys, if you can get the Harman Kardon system, whether used or if you're buying it new, option it. For the love of God, option it. Please, please. It is, the hi-fi is not bad, but this is miles better. Miles better. Okay, thanks, bye.